If you were anywhere near Felix Stowe today, you would have seen a huge ship. You might have asked yourself if it was the biggest ship in the world. In fact, and indeed it is, we understand the biggest moving object ever. It's called the Majestic. It's launched by Maersk. If you're a boat geek, your day is made. But the vessel itself tells an economic story. It arrives weighted down with goods from Asia to us. It leaves our shores a lot lighter. Can anything reverse that as we creep slowly away from austerity? Here's Andy Verity. This is the largest ship on the planet. It's a quarter of a mile long and can hold 18,000 container units, three times as many as the biggest ships of the last century. If you stack them up end to end, they break through the stratosphere. Burning 100 tonnes of fuel a day, but manned by a crew of just 22, the ship's so tall it had to be weighed down to get under the bridge that links Sweden to Denmark with just a metre to spare. And getting into Copenhagen was even trickier. Copenhagen is not used to cope with ships like this. So when we came in here we had to use a special of four very powerful top boats. We normally don't do that, but we had to make absolutely sure because it's a very narrow channel we're coming in through. And uh, that was one of our major concerns. Otherwise, so if something goes wrong, you could, you could bump against the sides? Yeah, we could actually do that, but of course we have made the arrangement so that will never happen. To sail from China to Europe, the ship will take three and a half weeks at an average speed of 16 knots, just 18 miles an hour. You could cycle faster. The priority is not speed, but transporting these as cheaply as possible. These dull-looking boxes have transformed the world. In 1956, a Texan businessman, Malcolm McLean, converted an oil tanker to take stacking metal boxes that could be switched in minutes from ship to train or lorry. Suddenly, you could unload a ship for a thirtieth of the previous price. Trade exploded. Containers, like the ones used to build this East London market, made transport so cheap it mattered far less than before where the goods were made. If you wanted to ship something somewhere, it would use up 25% of the cost of whatever you were trying to ship. And that meant that you couldn't ship very far. It would cost an awful lot even to get it to a port. Now with containerization, that cost has diminished dramatically. You can now ship a can of beer for about a cent. 6,000 container ships on the sea, 20 million containers going around the world at any one time, bringing us 90% of everything. Even some British food arrives by ship. Scottish cod it, uh, grows up in Scotland and then is sent to China for filleting and then sent back. Because what? shipping is so cheap, the cost of sending anything by ship by now, because of the efficiency of containerization, it's so cheap to send something by container. In one of these 20 foot boxes, you could fit 1,000 scooters or 10,000 pairs of jeans or 13,000 smartphones. And here's how cheap that makes it to transport each item. A scooter would cost 96 pence, a pair of jeans 10p, or a smartphone just 7p. This vast new vessel should make container shipping even cheaper. When this ship is full, if you laid each one of these containers end to end and tried to put them on a train, that train would have to be 68 miles long. In fact, this ship's half empty at the moment, and that's because if it were full, it would sit so low in the water, it wouldn't be able to get into the port of Copenhagen. In fact, there's no port in North America that can accommodate a ship this size. So how can it make economic sense to build a ship so large it can't fit into most of the world's ports? The answer, believe it or not, is cost cutting. This ship can dock in the Far Eastern Europe, a route where competition is fierce and rates have been slashed. Smaller ships don't make money. The reason why you need a large ship is of course that you get economies of scale uh, so you can transport more containers using less fuel. The Majestic is just the first of 20 such ships ordered by a Danish shipping group with revenues almost as big as Microsoft's and carbon emissions almost as big as Denmark's. While most container shippers lose money, bigger ships are a way back into profit. So this ship actually consumes per container transported around 50% less 
than the average of the vessels that were employed just a, just a couple of years ago. The ship comes here full of full containers. What about going back? We also, of course, from, from Europe have a lot of export of, of waste materials like scrap metal and, and waste paper and things like that. They take but there's our also <laughs> they take our rubbish. When this ship returns to Asia, it will ride higher in the water because up to half of these units will contain nothing but air. It's a problem we've had for 30 years. Our addiction to imports creates a nasty imbalance. The most recent data shows that in one month we exported 24.8 billion pounds worth of goods, but we imported 34.7 billion, a deficit of 9.9 .9 billion, and it's getting worse. In the boom, the West financed that addiction to imports by borrowing massively from the East. The East got a savings glut, the West got into debt, and the world got a crisis. That trade imbalance now shows up in the prices paid to ship a container. Container shipping companies are so keen for these things not to be empty that they'll offer you a massive incentive to export. Bringing one of these things in from Asia will cost you more than $1,500. Sending one back out, less than half that. The West's addiction to imports is only half the reason for that difference. China's kept its currency low, ensuring goods going west to east are less competitive. But bit by bit, the Chinese currency is appreciating. When that trend truly takes hold, this ship going east should sail lower in the water. We end with the news tonight that the BBC reversed the flow of talent leaving the organisation today with a star signing. The Sesame Street's Cookie Monster joined our presenter roster. He'll be appearing mostly on the children's channel CBBC, but we're fortunate enough to have been joined by him now from our studio at BBC Westminster. Cookie Monster, why Britain? Why the BBC? Cookie! Um, nom, 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 oh, nom, 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 nom. Ah, bye-bye.